Magic resistance in Classic WoW and Classic TBC is simple, but super misunderstood. We will cover the following sources for this information, so you can trust me. How magic resistance soft cap works. This mostly relates to tank gearing. How magic resist works at large. If your guild had a hard time on Saffron, this would have helped you a lot. Then we'll cover binary and non-binary spells. This is very important. It applies to all parts of the game, PvP and PvE. And finally, secret bonus content. Okay, sources time. The Blizzard website gave the basis of this information. However, in standard Blizzard fashion, they had the non-engineers write up their tables and so the information is wrong. But it's really damn close to being correct. Let me quickly explain this. The cap for resistance is equal to the aggressor's level times 5. That is why they are talking about a level 50 mage and 250 resistance. That would be the cap. This table has an error though. It should actually look like this. Basically, Blizzard has a rounding error in the game that makes it so you have practically zero chance to get a 100% resist against a spell in PvE. So the chance to resist 100% damage row is added into the chance to resist 75% damage row. In reality, you can get a 100% resist, but it's just not gonna be 25% of the time. It's a single digit amount if you're capped, if you go check out logs for warlocks on twin imps, ones that are tanking, you will likely see one or zero full resists in the average logged fight. You're going to see a bunch of 75% resists though. This claim I'm making is supported in the code for the server infrastructure most private servers use, the Mangos core. This is the issue slash pull request to modify the code. The request was accepted. This stuff is the real deal. Here's another graph thingy from Elitist Jerks. I'll have links to all of this junk in the description. If you're a programmer or just love computers, check it out. It's written in plain enough English for you to understand at least a little bit of it, even if you don't know how to program, or you can stick to the forum posts. Cool, now I'm done defending myself. You just have to trust me for the rest of the video. Magic Resistance Soft Cap. What is it? Soft caps generally mean the point at which additional points of a stat will have less effect. In the case of magic resistance, the less means that at the soft cap, you stop taking 100% damage ever. You will always at least resist 25% of a spell's damage. This is a uniquely valuable change for tanks. On a fight like Twin Imps, your tank could take about 5k damage from a non-resisted Shadow Bolt. Yes, as in if it did 100% of its damage. The Emperor casts a Shadow Bolt every 1.5 seconds. So you could take 10,000 damage within a 1.5 second window. Ouch! But if you are soft capped on resistance, you would at most take 10,000 times 75%, which is 7.5k, which is less than nearly any lock tank's max HP. So now your lock tank has to get hit at least three times back to back to die. Three casts would be a three second window, whereas two is a 1.5 second window. Notice how the time till death doubled for the worst case scenario, simply because the warlock got to soft cap. You have played with people who have fucked this up, they died really fast. They blamed RNG. Everyone lost a bunch of time due to a wipe, simply because they wanted to wing their gear and did not understand the mechanics of the game. So what is soft cap? Generally, it's thought of as 68% of the hard cap for resistance. So 215 in classic WoW at level 60 versus a boss. We got that from taking five, times the level of the creature, 63 in this case, then times 68%. In TBC, it would be equal to 250, which is 5 times 73 times 68%. It's actually 248, but 250 just sounds nicer. How much resistance should you have? How do you even approach that question? As a tank player, your job is to assure the worst case scenario has minimal chances of occurring. So you always want to be on the high end of resistance. Only concern yourself with that, don't look at the dumb table from before and try to get cute. Always get soft capped if the thing you want to resist deals damage directly, like a Shadow Bolt from Twin Imps. Whereas for a fight like Fire Maw, the damage is indirect, so the math is actually different. 
I'll cover Firemon in a moment, but let's talk about DPS players and healers and how they should gear on a fight like Saffron and Nax40. The failure case for Saffron is your healers can't heal you anymore. Usually it means they had a panic attack and died to dumb shit, or they ran out of mana. You can't buy Xanax on the auction house, so let's assume it's a mana problem. Okay, what does that imply about how to approach the Saffron fight? Damage dealing players should be evaluated on how much damage they deal per damage taken. Should they get soft cap? Well, do you think it matters if the max hit they can take from Frost Aura is 25% lower? No, not really. They won't die from bad resist RNG. They die from not getting any heals for a minute straight. So how should a DPS player think about resistance? Average case scenario. The average amount of damage resisted will be equal to this formula. Reduction percentage is equal to the resistance divided by the aggressor level times 5, then multiplied by 75%. This formula actually has a minor bug in it because for some spells you use this one instead, which is reduction percentage equals resistance divided by aggressor level times 5, and then you multiply that by 68%. The reason why has to do with 100% resist getting rolled into the 75% resist bucket like I was talking about before. This also has something to do with soft caps, a breakpoint in their formulas due to rounding errors, and the following non-linearity of resistance values and their relationship to damage taking that comes along with those uh, features or problems. <laughs> so basically, have your DPS players sim gear sets to determine their DPS, duh, then have them use this formula. Reduction percentage is equal to resistance divided by aggressor level times 5 times 75%. Now, they can take the DPS from the sim and multiply it by their reduction percentage. This will give you a way to rank their damage done per damage taken. Higher number makes them a better person. Now, what about healers? <laughs> this is going to piss people off. Generally, healers heal way more than the damage they take. Healers should not wear resistance in nearly any circumstance. Yeah, I know. People will argue with me about this in the comments. Fuck yourself. You didn't do any math or research how the servers are made to get your opinion. You just listened to some other idiot YouTuber or streamer and believed them. Just believe me instead. Come on, I have receipts. But let's get into it. You want your healers to heal the most possible per damage taken, right? If you send the amount that they could heal over an expected fight length and then substitute that for DPS, and then you can take that number and multiply it by the reduction percentage from the previous formula, that would give you the optimal way to gear a healer or a way to rank order different gear sets. You'll then very quickly see that having a healer give up a lot of healing power and mana to get an extra 20 resistance makes absolutely no fucking sense. Even though everyone does it, yes, even in raid groups I've been in, even in raid groups I've raid led, I have not been able to convince people of this hardly ever. You probably won't be able to either, but just know that everyone else is wrong. <laughs> God, I sound like a fucking idiot. Now let's talk about Fire Maw, binary spells and non-binary spells. A binary spell is either 100% resisted or 0% resisted. That's what binary refers to. Non-binary spells can be partially resisted though. Those are the only types of spell that we've talked about so far, non-binary. So what about Fire Maw? His spell damage from the Fire Aura or stacking debuff, it has two components, a damage one that deals about 150 damage and then a non-damaging stacking debuff. This non-damaging part is why the spell is binary. If you go check logs, you're gonna notice there is no parentheses with an R colon and the number values. That would mean that a partial resist occurred. Spells like Fear are binary. They can only be fully resisted or not resisted. How do you partially resist a Fear? Shadow Bolt, on the other hand, is non-binary. All dots are binary because on application, it just puts up a debuff. It doesn't deal damage. So how do you partially resist that? And some spells like Frostbolt are binary, even though they deal damage, and it's because they have a side effect. In this case, it's it applies a slow. And how do you partially resist the slow? Whereas Fireball has a debuff, but since the status effect is just that you take damage, the whole thing is partially resistible. The damage from dots can be partially resisted by monsters. You'll find that in logs, but I believe in PvP that dots do not get partially resisted. I could be wrong about PvP though, I really don't care about PvP. If you want to know the answer to this question, duel one of your caster friends, 
make sure they don't use any hit rating, and see if you can get a partial resist after taking like 100 ticks. Then you'll have your answer, but you probably don't want to run around in all resist gear and PvP anyways. Now, for the special bonus content, a montage of tips about gearing. Screw fire resist in phase 1 for Baron Geddon. You have a lot of bad options available, as in greens. Although green rings are great for resistance sets. Let's talk about Ragnaros. He applies a dot to your tank that deals fire damage. Don't have your tank use any fire resist on Rag, though. It's way more likely that the DPS get killed by threat issues after having the threat reset, which occurs every 30 seconds when he does the knockback. <laughs> really? If your tank wants to use resistance on Rag, they're being dumb. I don't want to call those people super dumb, though, because they just don't know any better and they're listening to content creators who also don't know any better, but fuck people who make videos and are wrong, that shit rots the world. So what about fire resist on Veil? It's dumb, even though the dragon attacks your tank like this, auto attack, fire breath, auto attack, fire breath, still doesn't matter, don't have any fire resist on anybody on Veil, especially not the tank, they're just gonna lose threat and kill everybody. But what about fire maw? On that one, use as much resistance as you can get your hands on because the debuff is a binary spell. So you'll vastly improve the probability of your debuff stacks completely dropping as you increase the amount of resistance you have, right? What about warlock tanks though on maybe twin imps? They should get soft cap. The rest of their gear, it should be tailored towards getting more HP or more damage if you care about their threat. But more resist is better, of course, but the big thing is soft cap doubling your time till death, assuming all your healers, you know, DC at the same time, that is. And then there's the fights like Saffron, where the main tank should have zero resist. Jesus, do not allow your tank to use any resist on this fight. The dragon auto attacks for just about more than any other mob in the whole game. Ugh. They take basically no damage from Frost at all as the tank. Healers, like we said before, they also shouldn't use resist, but if they insist on it, just tell them to use very little. It's a waste of item slots, but it's not going to be a big deal if all your healers wear three shitty pieces of gear. I mean, come on. You've probably killed it before with people wearing stupid gear. And also, never have anyone use resist on Kel'Thuzad. He does a Frost Bolt, as in a volley one, every like 40 seconds. Who cares about getting a little less damage taken from that? You can't resist the Frost Tomb damage. Damn it, guys, don't fucking use resist on KT and Nax. Whereas in TBC, if you're doing the Leo Theris fight, you're the Warlock tank, you should probably get as much resistance as possible because similar to Fire Maw, you got a stacking debuff. Whereas a fight like Hydros, have your tank get soft cap because it's like twin imps and you just want to avoid getting double tapped by the bots having good RNG. Average case damage, it's not that crazy. You could even do Hydros with zero resist, but maybe don't unless you know what you're doing. I don't want to list everything, but this is the TLDR. If the thing you want to resist stacks, get as much resistance as you can because it will increase the probability of dropping your stacks by a lot. If the thing that you want to resist hits very high, then get soft cap. Why? So that way you never take 100% damage, you always at least partially resist. And if it doesn't stack and it hits low, get as much as you can balance against whatever other thing you want to do a lot of so that'd be damage as a dps players or it could be effective healing as a healer generally this stuff just doesn't matter though that's it that's the video check out my other shit if you want to know exactly how the game works no it won't make your raid group better they probably won't believe you but at least you'll know that you are right oh by the way my name is jake remember that so we develop a parasocial relationship which will increase the probability that you click on my videos thereby granting me control of your attention